Okay, this is going to be our second video on Unit 1, Essential Skills Part 2. So the four things I want to cover in this are going to be precision versus accuracy, density, density problems, and conversion factors. And this last one I obviously have a lot of problems for. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, precision versus accuracy. So we use these terms a lot, but let's actually define and make sure we're clear on that. Uh, accuracy is pretty straightforward. It's how close a measurement is. Uh, or a data set is to the correct value. So when we did the volume uh, volume lab, we did uh, how does centimeter cube compare to milliliters. Most of us found a slope of very close to one. So if you had something like 0 0.996, that was very accurate, um, how close it is to the correct value. When we deal with precision, it's a little trickier because kind of the everyday use of the word precision um, is not the only definition. So the first thing I want to mention is precision of a measurement, an individual measurement, can refer to how many sig figs are correctly used. So, for example, two graduated cylinders here. This one measures to the, um, basically, nearly the tenth of the milliliter. This one only measures to the ten milliliters. So this is going to give you a more precise measurement than this one. Just the number of correct sig figs. And I made sure to say correctly because, because you can't just add extra sig figs unless you know they're actually there. So we talked about that with the measurement slides. Um, also, you need to know this definition of precision. And when we talk about accuracy versus precision, really this is the one that we're referring to. Precision of a set of measurements or data refers to how close the measurements are to one another. So if you take, you know, five measurements and it's, uh, let's say we're doing time, so you come up with um, 32.6 seconds, 32.4 uh, seconds, 32.5 seconds. This is very precise. Now these measurements themselves, you can look at the precision of each one according to this definition, but I would say this is very precise. If you had 32.6, 32.4, and 38.5, that's not going to be very precise. So a lot of times you'll see something like... Um, you know, a dartboard, and they'll say um, something like this that's going to be very precise, but it's not very accurate. Whereas something like this is going to be very precise and accurate. And something like this would be accurate if you were to average it to the middle, um, but not very precise. Okay? So that's accuracy versus precision. Let's talk about density next. So first and foremost, density is mass over volume, or m over v. The way I like to memorize my density calculation is with the density fox, which looks like this. So there's the fox, and you can see it's m over v. Uh, when we work out the density formula, it's important that we're able to also manipulate the formula to solve for m or v. So there's two ways of doing that. You can either just memorize the formula or the shortcut I'll teach you, uh, or you can just solve it mathematically. So let's just practice solving mathematically. Uh, density equals mass over volume. Let's say we want to get m by itself. So I give you a density and a volume. You need to find m for mass. Well. Think back in math class to get m by itself. You're just going to multiply both sides by v times v times v. These v's are going to cancel. Mass equals volume times density. If we need to solve for volume, starting with d equals m over v, it's a little trickier. I should just do this in two steps. Don't try to knock it out in one. So the first step, let's get volume out of the denominator. So to do that, well, let's multiply by V on both sides. Cancels here. So same formula as we just got. And now that V is out of the denominator, we can easily solve by dividing both sides by D. So we get volume equals mass over density. So make sure you know how to rearrange formulas like that. Now with this one, we use it so often that there's a little shortcut I use, uh, and that is this triangle. The triangle, and you arrange it in little thirds like that. 
And you have to put certain letters in each of these, and it's very important you remember the order. So the story I told in my classes is if you start driving, when you have to go to the DMV, it's almost like you have to overcome a mountain of stress and a mountain of paperwork. So you start and you climb the DMV mountain, okay? The way this works, cover up volume, volume equals mass over density. Cover up density, density equals mass over volume. Cover up mass, mass equals density times volume. This works well, but if you mess up this order of the letters, you're going to get it wrong. Uh, so you always want to, you know, if you're not completely confident in this, work it out mathematically. Another thing you always want to do is include your units and check. So if I'm solving for mass, D times V, so, you know, density could be something like grams per milliliters times volume, which is something like milliliters. Look at the units canceling. We're left with grams. That makes sense. If you don't include units, you can easily make a mistake. Uh, last thing I want to talk about with density is um, high density versus low density. When something has a high density, that means there's more mass packed into the same volume. Low density means less mass packed in the same volume. So by that logic, something with a low density is more likely to float than something with a high density. For a baseline density, definitely talk about water, which has a density right around 1. And I'll use 1 with just the 1 sig fig when I talk about water in general. Um, if you get more specific, like pure water at 25 degrees Celsius, now we're talking 1.00. But that does change if you add salt to it or if you add even chemicals inside or if you change the temperature. So water has a density of approximately 1, and the unit for that is going to be gram per centimeter cubed or 1 gram per milliliter. These are the exact same thing. So water forms our base density of 1. So most types of wood are going to have a density of less than 1, things like 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Most metals all metals, are going to have densities greater than 1. So as low as 2 and as high as, I don't even know, probably about 30, I think, would be the most dense. I know gold is very high, 19.3. Anyway, well, more on density. All right, so let's work out our first density problem. What is the density of a 45.65 gram piece of metal that displaces 16.9 milliliters of water? Well, if it displaces this much water, it means this is the volume. So we're given mass, we're given volume. Let's find density. Easy. Density equals mass over volume, which equals 45.65 grams over 16.9 milliliters. 45.65 divided by 16.9. Calculator tells me 2.70118 and so on. Uh, let's correct our sig figs first and then do our unit. So with this, we look at the problem and we say four sig figs, three sig figs. What's our answer limited to? Three sig figs. Let's turn that into three by saying 2.70. So these are going to just get cut off. And our unit for that is going to be grams per milliliter. I believe that's going to be aluminum. Okay, next one. Oops, right there. And you might want to pause the video, work this out, and then play. Uh, what's the mass of a 3,900 cubic centimeter piece of iron? Centimeter cubed. Uh, density of iron is 7.87 grams per centimeter cubed. Well, we're looking for uh, mass. So you can either solve, kind of rearrange mathematically, or uh, work with a triangle, which I prefer to do. D, M, V. Mass equals, cover mass, density times volume. Density times volume. And we're going to double check that with the units. So that's going to equal my density, which is this, 7.87 grams per centimeters cubed, times my volume. 3,900 centimeters cubed. And let's see what this gives us. First thing, before I even bother with the math, are the units going to look correct? Centimeter cubed, this is divided by centimeters cubed, so that cancels, leaves us with grams, which is good. That's a unit of mass. 7.87 times 3,900 
gives me 30693. Let's check sig figs. I'm seeing two sig figs there. I'm seeing three here, two sig figs. So we have to make this two sig figs. This six makes that round up, so I'm going to say 31,000 grams. That is the mass. Next one. Again, you might want to pause right here, work it out, and then play. What is the volume of a 0 0.002500 gold, gram gold flake? Density of gold is 19.30 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay? Solving for volume now. We're given mass and density. DMV. Volume equals mass over density. Okay? Which equals 0 0.002500 grams divided by my density, which is 19.30 grams per centimeter cubed. Let's check our units. This gram is going to cancel this gram because that's numerator denominator. And then we're left with grams, uh, centimeters cubed in that weird kind of double denominator, which math teachers might know a better term for that. But what I'm here seeing here is like it's the inverse of the inverse. So if you were to take x and inverse that, it's 1 over x. If you were to inverse it again, that becomes x again. So basically, if you have this double denominator, the unit's going to come up to the top. And that's what we're looking for, centimeters cubed. So let's work out the math. 0 0.002500 divided by 19.30 gives me 0 0.00012934. Let's look at sig figs. Four sig figs. Careful here, four sig figs. And here I'm seeing four sig figs. So we're going to cut this off at four sig figs. These zeros don't count. One, two, three, four. So I can just erase the 34 here. And my unit is going to be centimeters cubed. So obviously gold flake is tiny. Uh, next, we are on to conversion factors. Conversion factors are used to convert between units. And I said and more because throughout the year we're going to use it for more than just unit to unit. Okay, let's work through an example to go through the rules of this. What is the mass in kilograms of a 16-ton boulder? And 16 tons is a weight, which is not the same thing as mass, but uh, on the surface of Earth, we do have a conversion for it. All right, steps. Step one, write out your conversion factors that you'll need. So there are certain, certain ones you need to memorize at least if you're one of my students, and that's going to be your basic SI prefixes. So you have to know how many centimeters in a meter, how many you know, nanograms in a gram, uh, those sort of things. Some things you don't need to know. For example, you don't know, need to know kilograms and pounds. I'll always give you that. Um, even if I gave you something like tons, I would probably just tell you what a ton is just to make sure everyone knows. So write out your conversion factors. Well, in this case, we're starting with 16 tons. So we need to uh, make sure we know what a ton is. And it's going to be 1 ton equals 2,000 pounds. Okay. Ton has a lot of different meanings based on the way it's spelled. Uh, so we'll call that a regular ton is 2,000 pounds. And then this is our pounds to kilograms. So basically that's all we'll need because we're needing to go from tons to pounds to kilograms. Next, rewrite your original number which is your starting point. Now in this problem we're starting at 16 tons. So 16 tons. I can't go back on this. Let me fix my resolution. Okay, there we go. All right. So we started by rewriting our original starting point. Next step, turn the first relevant conversion factor into a fraction so that when you multiply it, the original unit will cancel out. Here's what that means. We have tons and pounds, we have kilograms and pounds. Which is the first one we need? What's the first relevant one? Well, in this case, we are looking to convert tons into pounds first. So let's deal with this one. Now. We can either 
arrange it like this. One ton over 2,000 pounds. Or we can say uh, 2,000 pounds over one ton. These both work because it's essentially dividing by itself. It's the same thing. This is like equal to one. This is like equal to one because it's the same. It's like a conversion factor. So what we're looking to do is cancel tons out and turn that into pounds. Now, which one of these two is going to do that? Well, it's going to be this one because that tons is basically in the numerator over an imaginary one. So if I were to move this one, tons is going to cancel tons. If I were to do this one, would anything cancel here? No, we'd get tons squared over pounds, which makes no sense. So we're going to go ahead and erase this. We're going to move that into position, just like that. Next step, pause. Double check that the units will cancel and that the sig fig is set up correctly, i.e. equal to 1. So I always pause here. Even though I've done these like a thousand times, I just take the one second to pause because I'll still catch myself making mistakes. Are the units going to cancel? Yes, they are. Is this unit correct? Yes, it is. And does 2,000 pounds over one ton make sense? Yes, 2,000 pounds are in one ton. A lot of times people accidentally write uh, 2,000 tons over one pound, something like that would be wrong. Continue to the next uh, conversion factor until you get to your desired unit. So we've now gone from tons to pounds. Now we need to go from pounds to kilograms. So we have one kilogram over 2.205 pounds. Okay, pound needs to cancel out pound, so I'm going to put my pounds down here, and I don't put one pound, I'm going to put 2.205 pounds, and this is going to be one kilogram. Pause, double check, are the units going to cancel? Yes, they will. Does this make sense? Is one kilogram equal to 2.205 pounds? Yes, it's not the other way around. Number five, continue, or we just went through that. Multiply slash divide to solve, and then, of course, check sig figs. And units. So we have now gotten into kilograms, which is what we want. Let's multiply it out. 16 times 2,000 equals... Don't need to multiply by 1, don't need to divide by 1, so I'm just going to say this divided by 2.205 gives me 145, 12.47, and so on. Let's look at sig figs. What's in my original problem? Where did I write it? 16 tons. How many sig figs in that? Two. I'm limited to two sig figs here. So my 1 is good, and this 4 is either going to stay a 4 or bump up. Well, since that's a 5, this is going to round up. So I'm going to say 1, 5, and the rest are going to be zeros. 0, 0, 0, leave it at that. I'm not going to say 0, 0, because then I'm adding, I'm making all these sig figs. So the answer is going to be 15,000 kilograms. That's how we do conversion factors. So I have a bunch more examples that we can work through. How many centimeters are in 2.23 kilometers? This is an easy one using just prefixes. Well, the relevant conversion factors, uh, you could do this in one step if you're real good with your kind of orders of magnitude, but I always prefer to break this up in two steps. Let's start with kilometers and go to meters. So we're going to say 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer. By the way, you could also say 1 kilometer equals 0 0.001 meters. This totally works, but I prefer to stay out of my decimals when I can. So we've gone from kilometers to meters. Let's go to centimeters. You could say now one meter equals 100 centimeters. Same thing. You could, if you want, say one centimeter equals 0 0.01 meters. I don't like doing that. All right. Those are the conversion factors. Let's write it out. 2.23 kilometers times... This is the one I want up here. In order to get kilometers to cancel, that's going to be on the bottom. So I'm going to say 1,000 meters per kilometer. You could put the one there. You don't have to, though. 
Uh, let's pause and check. Kilometer cancels kilometer. Does this make sense? Yes, it does. We're now in meters. Let's go to centimeters. So I want meter to cancel and turn into centimeters. So I need my meter on the bottom and I need my 100 centimeters up top. Pause, units cancel. Does this make sense? Yes, it does. Let's get our answer. 2.23 times 1,000 times 100 gives me 2, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0. Double check our sig figs. Three sig figs. Three sig figs. We're good. You can add the comma. And the unit here is kilometer. No, centimeter. All right. Next example. How many millimeters are in a standard football field? 100 point yards. Okay. There's one conversion that I ask my students to memorize. I suggest all students memorize it. It's very common. And that's going to be one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Now this is what we consider like an exact measurement. So we're not limited to three sig figs here. Don't use that to limit yourself in sig figs. Okay. So how many millimeters in a standard football field? We have 100 yards. So we need to go from yards to millimeters. Well, the first logical step is to say, well, what is a yard? Well, a yard is three feet. And then using this, we need to go from feet to inches. So uh, one foot equals 12 inches. So inches will get us to centimeters. And then we need to go from centimeters to millimeters. So let's say uh, one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. So those are our three conversion factors. Let's write out our problem. So start with what our starting point is, 100 point yards. First conversion factor, we're going from yards to feet. Right here. One yard equals three feet. I want my yard to cancel, so I'll put my yard down here, and I'll put my three feet on top. Pause. Do my units cancel? Yes, they do. Three feet in one yard, we're good. Moving on. We now have feet, let's go feet to inches. One foot equals 12 inches. So I need my foot down here, and I need my 12 inches up here. Pause, is this gonna cancel? Yes, it will. 12 inches and a foot makes sense. We're now in inches, let's go to centimeters. So here's where we're gonna use this up here. Well, I need my inches to cancel, so let's say one inch, and we'll do 2.54 centimeters. Are these gonna cancel? Inch cancels inch. Does this make sense? Yes, it does. We're now in centimeters. Let's go to millimeters. Well, right here's my conversion. Centimeters need to cancel, so let's do centimeters down here. And uh, millimeters, uh, and 10 of them. So let's double check. Centimeter cancels centimeter. Are there 10 millimeters in a centimeter? Yes. Let's get our answer. 100 times 3 times 12. Oops. Times 12. Times 2.54. Times 10. It is 91,400. Let's check sig figs. 100 point. That's three sig figs. Three sig figs works. And our unit is millimeters. Just like that. And that's our answer. Next one. Now we're going to deal with squaring a unit. And the same thing applies if you cube a unit. How many square feet are in 1.35 square meters? Well, let's see what we're going to need for this. You could Google how many feet in a meter. But on a test or quiz, if I don't give you that, you're going to have to use your memorization. And remember, 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Okay? So that is something that you should all know. And this is one thing that we'll need, okay? So we have inches and centimeters. Let's make sure we know how to get from meters to centimeters. So that's going to be one meter equals 100 centimeters. And now that we're in centimeters, go to inches, and then feet is going to be 12 inches equals one foot. I'm kind of making a mess up here. Uh, so we start with what, we, what our starting point is, 1.35 meters squared. Now, meter is going to turn into what first? Well, it's going to turn into centimeters first because we have one meter equals 100 centimeters. So the way I prefer to do this is just by writing uh, 
So meter is going to be on the bottom to cancel, and then I have 100 centimeters. But if you look now, this is only going to cancel one of the meters out because it's squared. So what you have to do is square this. Now, if you're real good with math, you could leave it like this. What I always prefer to do is just write it out twice. Okay. And now I'm going to check that my units cancel. Meter squared cancels meter meter. I'm left with centimeter squared, which is good. Does the do these both make sense? 100 centimeters to meter, yes. Okay. Uh, so we're now in square centimeters. We're going to go from centimeters to inches using this conversion. So let's get my 2.54 centimeters down here and my one inch above. Okay, and that centimeter is going to cancel that centimeter, but we need to do it one more time. Okay, so this is now going to cancel my second centimeter. And I'm left with square inches. Do these both make sense? Yes, they do. If you run out of space, just start on the next line. So now I'm in square inches. We're looking for square feet. Well, inches to feet is 12 inches and a foot. So I have inches on the top. I want to cancel my inches by saying 12 inches on the bottom, one foot on top, one foot on top again, 12 inches on the bottom. Okay. Uh, inch cancels inch, inch cancels inch, we're left with foot times foot, which is square feet, which is what we want. So, 1.35 times 100, times 100 again, divided by 2.54 equals, divided by 2.54 again equals, divided by... 12 equals, divided by 12 equals. Be real careful with this. The number I get is 1, 4, 5, 3, and so on. Let's look at sig figs, 3 sig figs. So I'm going to round this off to 1, 4, 5, 0. So this takes from 4 to 3 sig figs, and my unit is feet squared. That can't be right. Let me run the numbers again. It seems very large. Uh, I may have done a calculator error. 1.35 times 100 times 100 divided by 2.54 divided by 2.54 divided by 12. Yeah, divided by 12. Hmm, I must have missed a couple decimal points because now I'm seeing 14 point. 5.3, which is going to give me 14.5. Well, I would have made a mistake there, but fortunately I just kind of realized this is, you know, not that large. So 14.5 square feet. Uh, by the way, on tests and quizzes, if you show your work like this and you get the answer wrong like I just did, you'll get credit for it. We'll call that a calculator error, and as long as everything's done properly, you get credit, because I know these things are a little flimsy. Next problem. Car is traveling at 70 miles per hour. Convert this to meters per second. So this is an example where we have something in the numerator and something in the denominator that both need to be changed. So uh, let's start by writing our relevant units here. Well, actually, let me set this up like this. So 70 miles per hour is like this. 70 miles per hour. What we're looking to do is convert to meters per second. So in other words, our distance is going from miles into meters. Our time is going from hours into seconds. Okay. Now I'm going to skip writing out the conversion factors for this. Hopefully we can just work this one out. Um, the one thing that I'm going to use to jump over from British to metric though is going to be my go-to reliable one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Okay. All you need to memorize is this one thing. It'll take care of most of these problems for you. So at this point, we're going to think, do we want to handle distance first or time first? It doesn't matter what you do. Let's do distance first. So I want to go from miles to meters using this. My first choice is going to be feet in a mile, which I know as 5280 feet per mile. Pause. Do these cancel? Yes. Does this make sense? Yes. 
I'm now in feet. Let's get to inches. 12 inches per foot. Cancel, cancel. Yes, this makes sense. We're now in inches. Let's get to centimeters. 2.54 centimeters divided by 1 inch. Cancel, cancel. Does this make sense? Yes. And what are we looking for? Meters. So I need my centimeters down here, so it's going to be 100 centimeters, and that's equal to 1 meter. Cancel, cancel. So really, we just did the distance first, and we're looking for meters on top, which we're left with. Now, let's convert hours into seconds. So my next factor I'm going to do is convert my hours into minutes. Now, you could just memorize 3,600 seconds in an hour, but let's say you didn't. Hours to minutes. Now look, the hour is down here in the denominator. If I'm going to cancel that, this hour has to be up here in the numerator. So I'm going to say one hour over 60 minutes. Because now, make sure you're good on units. Denominator, cancel the numerator. If you have this flipped around, not going to get the right answer. So now we have 60 minutes on the bottom. We need one more conversion factor, which I'll start down here. We're looking to go from minutes to seconds, so it's 60. And look, minutes are on the bottom. So I need my minutes to be up here in the numerator, and that's going to be over 60 seconds. Cancel my units. Denominator minutes cancels numerator minutes. Units look good because I have meters up top, and I have seconds on the bottom, meters per second. Let's work out the math. And I'll look, try to go more slowly this time so we don't mess up again. 70 times 5280 times 12, times 2.54, divided by 100, divided by 60, divided by 60, gives me 31.29. Let's look at sig figs. 70 point miles per hour, two sig figs. These can just be easily cut off. 31 meters per second. Next problem, you order a 30 cubic yard dumpster for your industrial mercury. How many 60 liter barrels of mercury could you pour into the dumpster? All right, so the unit we're looking to convert from is cubic yards, 30 of them, all the way to these barrels. This is a little trickier, but we can still solve it the exact same way, okay? now. Let me just run through this in my head. Here's the, the key conversion. We're going from a cubic length to liters. So we're still dealing in volume, but we're going to have to jump from a cubic length to a type of liter. The key to doing that is to remember one centimeter cubed equals one uh, milliliter. Okay. Now another thing we have to consider is that we're given cubic yards. Now yards is of course a British unit. We need to go from yards to centimeters and to do that we're going to use our good old trusty one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. This is kind of a challenging problem. Let's work it out. So I'm going to start with what I'm originally given. Now you have two sets of numbers here but we want to see how many of these barrels could fit in this starting point. So converting yard, cubic yards to this many barrels. So, 30 yards cubed is my starting point. I'm going to go from cubic yards to cubic inches to cubic centimeters. All right, first, cubic yards needs to go into cubic feet. Now, let's skip a step. Three feet in a yard, so how many inches? 36. So, I'm going to say 36 inches per yard. But I'm going to do this three times. I try to avoid cubing things unless I really have to, just because of parentheses on the calculator. So I've got myself into cubic inches. Let's double check our units. Cubic yard cancels yard, yard, yard. We're left with inches cubed. Does this make sense? 36 in a yard? Yes. Let's go from inches to centimeters. Inches are up here, so I need inches down here. 
and that's 2.54 centimeters. 2.54 centimeters over inch. 2.54 centimeters per inch. Inch cancels inch, inch cancels inch, inch cancels inch. We're left with centimeter cubed. Good. Cubic centimeters can now be converted into milliliters. We're now crossing from a cubic length into a liquid volume. So I have my centimeters cubed on top. In order to cancel that out, I need to put my centimeters cubed on the bottom. And what is this equal to? One milliliter. Okay. We want to say how many 60 liter barrels. So let's get from milliliters to liters. Actually, let me pause and cancel this out. Centimeter, 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 cancels centimeter cubed, and we're left with milliliter. Now we need to go to liters. Well, I want my milliliters to cancel and go to liters, so I'm going to put my milliliters down here and my liters up top. Let's make sure the number works. It's 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Cancel, cancel. Now I have liters. The question doesn't say how many liters of mercury. It says how many 60 liter barrels. So we can make up a random, well not random, but make up a new conversion factor which says 60 liters equals one barrel. Because that's true, it's a 60 liter barrel. So you could say 60 liters over one barrel or one barrel over 60 liters. What's going to cancel this out? Well, we want liters on the bottom. So let's put our 60 liters down here and our one barrel up here. If I could spell correctly, that would help. Okay. Liter cancels liter. We're left with barrels. This should work. My units all have canceled. I'm left with barrels. Let's work out the math. 30 times 36 times 36 times 36 times 2.54 times 2.54 times 2.54 divided by 1,000 divided by 60 equals 382.277, so we'll call that 28, and the unit here is barrels. Look at sig figs. Hmm. Well, 30, I didn't put a decimal here. I also didn't put a decimal at 60. So how many sig figs in 30, no decimal? One sig fig. Round that to one sig fig, you could fit about 400 barrels. And that's your answer. Okay. Bonus follow-up. The density of mercury is 13.56 grams per milliliter. What would the mass of this mercury be in kilograms? So basically, how heavy is that imaginary dumpster going to be? Now, without having to redo this whole problem, let's just backtrack to find how many liters this is. Okay. Now, I divided by 60, so I can just multiply by 60 again. So let's say 400 barrels times 60 liters per barrel gives me 24,000 and that's with one degree of certainty, one sig fig, 24,000 liters. Again, I just pulled that right from the last problem with a little backtracking. Uh, 24,000 liters is my volume. My density equals 13.56 grams per milliliter. And I'm looking for the mass. Let's do my little triangle, DMV. Mass equals density times volume. But let's consider this. Density is this. Volume is this. Can I multiply these together? No, because the units aren't going to cancel. I have milliliters here, and I have liters here. So you have to convert one of these two. Easiest way to do it, let's get our liters into milliliters. So 24,000 liters into milliliters is going to be, well, I need my liters on the bottom to cancel, and then my thousand up top. Cancel, cancel. So this is just going to turn into 24 million. Thousand times 24,000. It's going to be 24 million milliliters. Okay? 
So, mass equals density times volume. That's my volume. My density is this, 13.56. And in fact, let me move that around because I'm a stickler for units. 13.56 grams per milliliter. Let's look at our units. Grams per milliliter times milliliter. Milliliter cancels. We get grams. Let's work this out. So 24 million times 13.56 grams gives us, let me do this on a new slide, 3, 2, 5, 4, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0 grams. Now, first thing, sig figs. We're still limited to just that. I should have limited that to one sig fig back here. I noticed that. 400 barrels, so one sig fig. See the problem that happens when you don't write a problem correctly, when you leave out the decimal. Um, I'm going to imagine that I have two sig figs here, 30 point. That would have affected this answer, yes. But let's just cut our losses. Okay? So I'm going to limit this to two sig figs in this answer. So my three is good. My two might go up, might stay the same. Well, that five indicates that that's going to go up to a three. And let's fill the rest out in zeros. And that's grams. Okay? 330 million. Let's turn this into kilometers, like a, or kilograms, like I asked for in the problem. Now, you could just kind of cut those three zeros off, but let's make sure we're clear on why. Uh, we need grams on the bottom, so it's going to be 1,000 grams and one kilogram here. Gram cancels gram. So divide that by 1,000. It's the same thing as cutting off three zeros, just like that. All right. So that's our final answer. If you fill a giant dumpster with mercury, it's going to weigh 330,000 kilograms, which times 2.2, and that's pounds, 2.205. 330000 times 2.205. That would be 730,000 pounds. Very happy.